I watched the trailer to Transformers 1 and I want to tell you my thoughts about it. Transformers 1 animated movie about the early days of Optimus Prime and Megatron before they became Optimus Prime and Megatron, when they were friends, when they were lowly workers on Cybertron, living beneath the surface, not allowed to go above the surface. And we're gonna see their adventure of not only going above the surface with their new friends, Bumblebee and Alita One, but also, of course, seeing the story progress to them becoming the Optimus Prime and Megatron that we know from the past Transformers media properties. <laughs> so it's that whole like Optimus and Megatron, we're buddies right now, but you know, eventually it's gonna be Autobots, Decepticons. So this movie was announced a while back and I've been very hyped about it coming out since this announcement because I knew it was going to be a fully animated movie. And that is something I've always wanted to see with Transformers dating all the way back to Transformers the movie from the 80s. You got the touch, you got the power, yeah! Because even though I've had varying degrees of enjoyment with the live action CG Transformers movies, the Michael Bay ones, Bumblebee, the recent one, Rise of the Beast, which I actually enjoyed, those movies are fun and they do some really cool epic action sequences, but you can always tell there's a limitation, particularly when it comes to showing the Transformers early days on Cybertron. We had that amazing couple of sequences in Bumblebee where we got to see the Transformers in Cybertron, complete CG, and it was awesome. And I would love to see an entire movie like that, but obviously an entire movie like that would be very expensive even with CG. So it's understandable that to tell that story, you wanna do it in animation. And so that's really cool that they decided to go that route with this. And so far, I'm really loving the animation. I hope this makes sense. <laughs> This movie is, doesn't look like Disney Pixar. It doesn't look like Spider-Verse. It looks like it's its own thing. But what it reminds me of, the vibes it gives me, it's like, you remember the time in like the 90s and early 2000s when Saturday morning cartoons and cartoons on television were really trying to get into CG and they had a certain style to them. I'm talking about Reboot, uh, Beast Wars, Transformers, Bionicle, <laughs> you know, Jimmy Neutron, the series, even the 2012 Ninja Turtles, like that era of time of CG animated shows. This feels like the vibes of those, but with a much bigger budget. Does that make sense? It's like those types of shows, but with money. <laughs> it looks very detailed. I love some of the action sequences that they showed in this. I love how the animation looks, but for some reason I get that vibe. And that's not a negative thing. I actually like that, but it's just like, yeah, what if your Saturday morning Transformers CG animated series, was it Transformers Prime or whatever? What if that type of show got a movie level budget and then became a movie on the big screen? That's what this feels like, Transformers 1. And I think that's really cool because I love watching a Saturday morning cartoon with a big budget on the big screen. That works for me. Like this is a little Andre dream come true to see this movie come up. This is the type of thing that if I saw Transformers the movie back in you know the 80s or 90s or whatever, and it looked like that, I would be like, oh my God. So that's gonna be great for both older and younger Transformers fans and possibly new Transformers fans to have that feeling when they see this. So that's very exciting. I love that it's set on Cybertron. I love that it's focused on the Transformers in a Transformers movie. What are the odds of that? This one is finally putting them front and center. We're on Cybertron. We haven't even gotten to Earth yet. There's no humans yet. It is all about the Transformers characters. This is great. The more that we connect to them as characters and not just a group of CG robots, then we can be more connected to what they're going through in their story. I'm hoping that this movie does that. And it seems like that they're doing that so far, particularly with the Optimus and Megatron relationship. They even have different names before they become those names. They're Orion Pax and D-16. Report to waste management. That whole dynamic of them being friends, being lowly workers before they become the leaders that they are meant to become, even though they're gonna be leaders on different sides of the war. All that stuff is very intriguing. It's very interesting. I know we're just lowly worker bots who can't even transform. Don't you wanna see what's out there? Humans can connect to robot transforming robots. <laughs> we can do it, it's okay. Just give them personalities and we got this. Access your full potential. And I like the designs that they made for these characters. They're robotic, but they're obviously a little bit more fluid animation than what we're used to sometimes with Transformers, but they work for me. I think they're really cool designs and it's a nice blend of old and new. They have those colors that you recognize and those styles that you recognize of these specific characters while at the same time being able to make something kind of new and different because that's good for the movie. And of course, it's also good for the toys because remember, this is a Hasbro property and that's the whole point of this thing. Criticize and think about the movie all you want, but at the end of the day, 
It's all about them toy sales. That's what will determine if we get a sequel to this thing. <laughs> you know what? We are so screwed. Thought you weren't talking to me. The voice acting, which I know the whole celebrities being voice actors has been a whole big thing. And it's a very confusing thing. It's a confusing thing for me because on one hand, I'm always like, yes, please hire voice actors over celebrities. You two, come with me. But then there are some celebrities who do a really good job at voice acting. Like I love Jack Black as Bowser. Just a couple days ago, I was gushing about how excited I am that Keanu Reeves is Shadow the Hedgehog in the next Sonic movie. It's really weird. And I think what it all boils down to is there's the person by person casting and does that work? And then there's the general concept of studios always wanting to put celebrities as voices versus voice actors for the name of just having that one shot. And it was even in this trailer, that shot with all the names. They just love having that shot with all the names. Starring Judd Nelson as Hot Rod, Leonard Nimoy as Galvatron, and Orson Welles. Like when Chris Kimsworth first started talking, I was a little thrown off. So, how long do you think we'll be here? I'm not talking to you. But then as I listened to him later throughout the trailer, I could tell that his voice was changing and he was getting more to sounding like the actual Optimus Prime. We know obviously not the same as Peter Cullen, but definitely getting that delivery of lines to sound like, okay, that's how Optimus Prime talks, but like a younger version of him. We stand here together as one. So if I see that transitioning happening throughout the movie, I think that will be neat because I think that's the whole thing that's always a challenge with these types of movies, particularly with advertising them in something like trailers is they're definitely wanting to do an evolution of these characters to become the characters that we know them to be. But that means you have to sometimes show them before that happens, how much of that is in the movie before we get that or is this part one and then part two is when we see more of that dynamic because obviously they want a part two hi there i'm b127 i'm actually working on some nicknames the the one i'm floating right now is um badassatron which is actually pronounced badassatron um we're gonna call you b i think the reason why there's a lot of comedy in this trailer is because it's very bumblebee focused Bumblebee is played by Keegan Michael Key, and he is obviously going to be the comic relief in this movie. But there are still a couple of other scenes in this trailer where there are other comedic things that happen. Like there's a part where they're running about the transformer and they fall down. On three, one. <laughs> Where's my head? is coming off a little bit more comedic than I was expecting it to be because when they announced that they were doing a fully animated Transformers 1 movie, thoughts went to that sequence in Bumblebee that we saw and being like, oh, that's gonna be the entire movie. And now it's feeling more like, okay, this is a family-friendly comedy. Rise of the Beast had some comedic moments in it. Obviously you had Pete Davidson as Mirage, but they still kind of had that balance of funny and serious, but you felt that even in the trailers. Whereas this one might feel like it's gonna be mostly comedy. Why did you cut the door? What? No, it was already like that. Right? Yes, that's, that's right. right. Yes. It was, yeah, yes. it was already mm -hmm. like, yeah. So now it's a question of, is it mostly comedy or did you mostly show the comedic parts in the trailers and there's a lot of more serious, dramatic action things that are gonna happen in this movie that you're hiding, holding back because you don't wanna reveal all your stuff out in the trailer. We'll find out when the movie comes out. But I am hoping for that. I'm not gonna be this fuddy-duddy that doesn't want any jokes. And I think some of the jokes that were in this, I actually laughed at. Keegan Michael Key, I think is doing a good job as Bumblebee and that comedic role. But obviously this is a story that is leading to a war on Cybertron. So hopefully <laughs> that does get a little bit dramatic at times. I am understanding that they probably wanna make at least a couple of movies, if not a trilogy or so of movies in just this animated form. So I could see this being a thing, and I said this about Mutant Mayhem as well, I could see it being an evolution where it starts off lighthearted and fun, but then as we get closer and closer to the real story, in this case, the war on Cybertron, that's when things are gonna get more serious. And then by the time you're at the second or third movie, then shit gets real. So I am still excited about seeing this movie. I think it's gonna be interesting. I just love the idea that finally we are getting a fully animated Transformers movie after all this time. It's something I've always wanted. It's something I'm really excited about. And I'm hoping that there's even more awesome things that's gonna happen with this movie that they're not showing because I don't need it all in the trailers. I can't wait to see how this turns out and hopefully it turns out good. And I hope it's good enough to get multiple ones of these because I would love to see a full war on Cybertron movie story go on the big screen. That'd be awesome. This movie comes out fall 2024. So let me know what you thought about the trailer. Let me know if you're gonna check out the movie yourself. We all are one, like a play cousin. Transform and roll out 5,000. <laughs>